a gesture of goodwill at my first meeting, I brought a bag full of books and a schmoo bag. Um, you guys might know I, I do book reviews for Amazon, so publishers are constantly shipping me books, and I don't read them all. I accumulate them, and then pretty much once a year, or you know, various intervals, I just bring them to a big meeting like this and give them away. So I have a bag full of books. I'm not sure. Maybe during dinner we can pull them out. You guys can take a look at them. There's a decent mix of decent books here. So I thought about what's something we could talk about just for a few minutes in uh, trying to fill up some time. And Doug's going to talk about Security Onion later. So I'm not going to talk about Security Onion, but I'm going to talk about a project that's in Security Onion that up till now has been pretty difficult to use. And it's called Bro. Just It has just a great name, Bro. Like, hey, man, you use Bro? Yeah. Um, has anybody heard of Bro? Okay, how many people use Bro? Okay, a couple. Um, you know what I'm talking about when I say Bro, so I'll just I'll describe what it is. Don't have any internet connectivity, but if you want to find out, go to bro-ids.org. So what is Bro? Bro is a software uh, program that the development began, I think, in '96. Or 97. It's one of the oldest network security tools around. Uh, the original developer was a guy named Vern Paxson, and the idea behind Bro was it's sort of it wasn't designed to be the anti-snort, but that's kind of what it is. If you think about snort as a tool that looks at traffic when it sees something that matches one of its signatures, it gives you an alert. Bro, on the other hand, is a tool that watches network traffic and profiles everything that it sees, or at least things that it understands. So it's not about trying to tell you what's bad. It tries to tell you what's happening. And then you as the administrator, the security person, can make a decision as to whether or not you think that that's good or bad or indifferent. Now, Bro is a really, really powerful program. Uh, it's Turing complete. You can write other programs in the Bro scripting language. However, most people never use it because it was so complicated to use. Up until Bro 2.0, which was just released within the last month, you had to have basically a PhD from Berkeley in order to use it, which is what all the guys who were using Bro mainly uh, had. I went to a Bro for Dummies, basically, course uh, a couple years ago. No Bro experience required. Just show up. We'll teach you everything. I sat down, and I realized everybody there was from Berkeley or Lawrence Livermore or all one of the national labs, and I said, I am in trouble. Uh, and it turned out I was in trouble. After the first exercise, I got lost. Um, but then I realized I had learned enough to sort of change the way I looked at tracking what was going on on the network. Well, the reason I'm here to tell you about this is because you don't need that PhD anymore to learn to use this program for two reasons. One, it's in Security Onion. So when Doug teaches you about Security Onion in a couple hours, you'll have all of this at your disposal. The second reason is even if you didn't want to use Security Onion, if you just install this thing and start it, it will do amazing things for you with no configuration. Basically, all you need to do is point it at the right interface, and it will produce output. So what I thought you might like to see is I have uh, a couple, well, I have a virtual machine here. Uh, it's a Security Onion virtual machine. And I have some data that was collected by Bro. And again, this I just learned five minutes ago I would do this, so it doesn't have the best data in the world. But it basically has some data so you can see the sorts of things that Bro can show you. So let me just show you sort of what's involved here. When you run, everybody can read that and understand what that is, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's just a process listing. Bro has a bunch of different components that are running uh, while it's collecting its data. And everything has been, is, uh, is built into, the, oh, let me uh, move this up here. Oh, that didn't work very well, did it? Let's see. Let's just do this. So everything's controlled now by this Bro control program. And what's neat about that is that you can cluster Bro and have multiple Bros. This just gets better as it goes on. Uh, you can have multiple Bros talk to each other. Uh, now, I'm not a Snort hater. I use Snort every day. That's another weird thing we could start talking about. But um, Bro can talk to other instances of itself. It can maintain state, and this is one of the ways that people are using it in multi-CPU environments. You run multiple instances of Bro, all of whom communicate with each other and exchange state and all that. Um, so once you have this thing installed, you can check to see if it's ready to go. It'll go through its configuration file, and it'll tell you if there's any errors. 
And this one should come up working because Doug did it. Yay. Right? Now the best... You're making me blush. That's right. The reason I hired Doug was because of this, because we needed this. It's awesome. Once you have... Now this is what's so great about Security Onion. This is a preview. Once you start Security Onion, Bro starts as well. And as you can see, it's running. It's running here. It's got its three components, a manager, a proxy, and a worker. It's running on my system, and it's just doing its, 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 uh, its best here. So the question is, what kind of data do you get from running this kind of program? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is you're not going to get any alerts. At least you're not going to get alerts like you'd expect from something like Snort. So don't expect to see uh, web, PHP, bull, you know, it's, not, it's, nothing, it's nothing like that. But that's fine, because there's other programs that do that. What you're going to get are things like this. You're going to get interesting summaries in text files of activity that's happening on your network. So let me just talk a little bit about the structure of that. Um, what you're going to get is, at least on the security onion distro, you'll get a directory called NSM Bro Logs. And let's do this here. You'll get a directory for each day that Bro is active. So on systems that I have, you know, there's days and weeks and months of, of these directories. You'll have a current directory, and in the current directory is whatever, what anything Bro is seeing now. And it will be just be straight up text. Actually, let's do this. And you'll just get entries of things that Bro sees. So here you can see my system isn't even on the network, but it's generating some DNS requests. Uh, these are actually requests coming out of Security Onion, trying to get out to the network, which doesn't exist right now. You'll have a timestamp. Then you have a, uh, a UID that's associated with every element in Bro associated with a connection. So you can use this UID as a, hey, as a unique identifier to match this up against other log entries. And then you get uh, entries and so forth. So let me just show you some of the things I have here. Um, one to start out with might be the con log. Actually, let me do it this way. The con log is a, is a connection log. It's a listing of, of TCP, UDP, ICMP activities that Bro sees. So if you're using any type of NetFlow collector, you're familiar with something like this, except the connection log is uh, bidirectional. So all the records are, it's per flow you get one record, as opposed to NetFlow where you get a record one way and a record the other way. And you'll see that UID, so you should be able to match up UIDs against, against other entries. And you can see it, it counts how many bytes it sees, how many packets it sees, things like that. Uh, I showed you the DNS log. Let me go into something that has more data that might be interesting to look at. So, yes, sir. Let's try that. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, text color I want. That easier? Okay, cool. Good feedback. You want a book? <laughs> you can have one. This, I don't know. You probably know all that stuff anyway. Um, so let's take a look at some of the things that are in here that might be interesting. So just taking a quick look, there's sort of two categories of activity that you'll see. One is, uh, well, maybe three. There's sort of uh, records that Bro creates for its own keeping, like communication log is sort of what it's doing, talking to other bros. Uh, what else is up there? Notice policy, packet filter, reporter, weird. These are all things that I tend not to pay a whole lot of attention to. I spend more in, or I spend more time looking at the, the raw data that it's sending me. So for example, let's look at the HTTP log. Now you'll see all of these are gzip. So what happens is at regular intervals, Bro will take the contents of the current directory, gzip them, and archive them into the directory for that day. And that's how, over time, it just sort of keeps uh, recording them. Yes? Does it kick those off to a central server over time also? No. This is all maintained locally. So if you wanted to do something like that, you'd have to <coughs> move them somewhere. Um, 
two ways that I've seen people sort of work with this data. One is uh, there's a, pro a project called ELSA that uh, a guy named Martin Holsta uh, had, in fact, I just retweeted his latest thing on Olsa or ELSA the other day. He wrote like an entire Splunk basically just for this to serve his own needs because he thought Splunk was too expensive. So uh, we're, well, I'm going to say we. Doug and Scott are probably going to try to get ELSA running in uh, Security Edge. So that may become the new interface to this data, and that's why it's that. The other thing I've seen people do is they do put it all in Splunk. Cool. All right. I thought Splunk was free. I thought it was <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you could, I mean, depending on, on the environment, you may be able to get 500 megs worth, and that's it. But, yeah, not in your environment. I know that's for sure. All right. I've seen your Splunk bill. I help. No, oh, that was expensive. Anyway. It's good though. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about this. What they did with Bro 2.0 is they said Bro is a pain for people to use if you don't know how to do anything. So what they said was let's talk to users and find out what's the most common pieces that they run, and then we'll just turn those on. Previously, to get this output, you'd have to string together like 20 different command line policy scripts. Everything in Bro is controlled by policy scripts. So once you know the language, you build a policy script, you go from there. So what they said was, we, these are the things we think people will want to know right off the bat. If you don't like this, you can add to it, you can delete it, you can modify the policy scripts. Um, the Bro community is basically waiting for someone to say, hey, could you do this? And then like 10 minutes later, somebody creates a new policy script, posts the mailing list. And they're desperate for people to use this program because it's so powerful. They've got you know grant money. Uh, it's just, there's this big thing called Snort that everybody uses. So, it, so the, the, the question is, is there anything that's sort of real time about this? It's a different use model. So let me put it this way. You can make Bro do anything because it's a programming language. It's a programming language for watching traffic and doing something, which is really amazing. And it operates not at the packet level. It operates at, at the stream or even the log level. So you basically anything you could devise, you could have it happen real time. and. You could have a watcher thread, watch a directory, and once an alert is created, or you can spawn an email. I mean, you could do all those things if you want. But for the most part, the things that people are doing in real time, they tend to use a, a packet processing system like Snort for that. So it isn't quite necessary, I think, to do that. Now, having said that, I'm sure there's some power bro users who are, they've automated, you know, threshold counts when they see this, they get a notice and so forth. Yeah. While an active log file is being written, you know, prior to being the debug house, yeah. is it create a line when we see yeah. a connection and then we update the line when the connection's closed and we know how many bytes are in the Yeah, see, I don't, I haven't played with it that way. I, I use it strictly for this, I let it sit there and run. Mm -hmm. what, that, yeah. yeah, I don't use Bro alone. I use Bro as, like, as part of Security Onion. I'm getting all my real-time data out of Snort, essentially, going into something like Squeal or Snorby. Uh, and then when I need backup data, I can go to this sort of thing. Yes? So that's all at sort of another layer. Right. Uh, I know that people are using Bro with exotic hardware. Including the open source stuff. Yeah. Coming to security and soon. Don't right? do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a promise you're making an obvious threat. <laughs> Was there another question? OK. Um, all right, so you know, here's an example of the DNA, of the, uh, what was this, HTTP records as they're coming in. And again, I can't remember exactly what it was. All of this, I had a question about, oh, one of our users was reversing a protocol, and he said, I'd like to be able to get X, Y, and Z out of the HTTP log. Richard, do you know how to do that? And I said, I don't know how to do that, but I bet a bro developer would. And I asked Seth, he said, oh, yeah, try this policy log. Boom, we got it. He had been, this guy had been, you know, this is like a mandate consultant, been trying all these different ways, writing his own programs. And boom, Bro is able to do it. It's just a question of pulling the right parts out of the uh, the policy engine. All right, so that's this is sort of the raw data that you can get out of Bro. 
The other thing I wanted to show is Bro is doing just some of the default policy scripts are pulling out things that you might be interested in. Like someone might say, hey, I'd like to know all the unique uh, machines that are on the network. So this is going to be lame because it's, uh, whoops, did we cat? This is going to be lame because it's just this one laptop monitoring one interface. But you run this thing on your production network, it's going to kick out all the IPs that it sees and when it saw them and things like that. Okay, maybe that's not that cool. Um, the software log is kind of neat. What that does is, as it sees user agents or anything it can use to identify software, it will tell you. So that's kind of fun. So you can see here, there's an open SSH client. Here was when uh, this machine was trying to update itself. What other stuff do I have here? Oh, SSL. So any of you who are tracking SSL certs when you see bad guys doing their command and control, um, you can do something like that and take a look at those. So you can pull out elements there out of the common name field or whatever it is you're interested in. What's it logging for SSH? What's it logging for SSH? So here you can see this is looks like me connecting into one of my servers somewhere. So for bandwidth and all that, those kind of tests are, I mean, they're highly subjective on the person using them and the hardware. I do know that one place where Bro is very popular is in research and education networks. And I know there are people who are already running this at 10 gig, and they're looking to go to 40 and then 100. Um, because it can do two things for you. One, um, you can choose what you're going to log and it's open so you can change it if necessary. So generally at those speeds we're talking about, the gentleman mentioned the exotic hardware, we're getting a combination of some exotic hardware and some good policy. And also the third part is, um, is taking advantage of the SMP or the ability to do a cluster. So you'll have you know, a 24 core machine, each core running one bro instance, and they're all talking to each other, which is not something you can do easily with other software. or can they all do more work on the same pile of packages? So what I've heard for cases where you're using extreme bandwidth like that, um, I know at GE we bought something called CPacket where it would do flow-based um, dynamic load balancing. So we didn't have to set a policy around all HTTP or all these MAC addresses or whatever. CPacket would see the traffic coming in. It would, it would say, all right, based on an algorithm I'm going to use, I'm going to split it into these 10 destination boxes and do it that way. I think that tends to be the most successful load balancing for high speed. I was just guess I was wondering how uh, how people did it with Bro without Box on a on a box of Box that you built. Yeah, so I well I don't know how people do it out of the box on a on a heavy duty system. That's a, a middle ground where I haven't I've had to deal with the very, very high volume where we had to buy specialized hardware or the low speeds of a gig and lower where it's not even an issue. I don't really know in the middle. Maybe so. Yeah, so the I think that's about all I have. Let me see if there's any other logs here that might be looking interesting from something else. Um, yeah, we, okay, so here's the thing. Um, Bro is... I told you guys that Bro is a uh, it's a policy inspection. Let's see, it's a policy inspection tool as well. And I don't mean security policy. I mean like traffic conformance. So it will see things like yeah, what is this saying? DNS reply seen after done. DNS truncated. RRRD link. I mean. Yeah, it's all the stuff that's supposed to not make the internet work, but the internet is very forgiving. And so this, all of this goes by, you never even know. The idea, you know, as you might imagine is, oh, we're using some weird combination of X, Y, and Z, that that means it's a covert channel. No, that's just some broken implementation of whatever DNS resolver. So yeah, I, that's why I tend not to bother with the removal of other stuff.
Yeah, and so the question was about baseline. This is a wonderful baseline tool because you could baseline using a con log. Uh, I, I actually didn't even mention that. There's, let me see if the summarization is in this one. There's, there's some summarization. Oh, yeah, here it is. So it looks terrible with the screen and all that, but it will do some basic, like sort of baselining per host with traffic that it's seen and protocol. So you can do some of that. I know of some people who've dumped this into Splunk, and over time they can do time sequencing to see changes. So it can be, it can do some of that. Uh, many times people just do simple baselining though using something like Argus, which is just a traffic flow meter. Um, but yeah, you could do that sort of thing with this. If you could say, for example, here's all the SSL certs I see, and then check the outliers. Question? Yeah. Or is it just stay where it's average? No, no. So Bro is, is interesting in that over the last two years, they've gotten some outside funding for the first time. It used to just be Vern and his graduate students and then various volunteers. Now, though, they've got full-time developers. That's how Seth Hall is, is able to work on this full-time. So I think what they're trying to do is, one, uh, show people that it's easy to use, and it's easy to use now, uh, and two,